everyone, it's Dr. Joy, board certified dermatologist, and I'm excited that this week we're going to react to a guy's skincare routine. I've done tons of reaction videos before to all sorts of female celebrities, which I'll link to before. You can watch some of those in the watch more section. I think I reacted in the past to Charlie D'Amelio, Sydney Sweeney, Selena Gomez, most recently Ariana Grande, and a whole host of others. So you can check those out if you haven't seen those yet. But today we're going to react to a man's nighttime skincare routine and it is none other than Offset who rose to fame as part of the rap group Migos and he is married to Cardi B with whom he shares two beautiful children. And he recently sat down with Harper's Bazaar to go over his entire nighttime skincare routine. So I wanna watch it, go over it with you, let you know what I think. And as usual, these are not meant to be critiques. I love to hear about different people's skincare routines, what products they're using, what they like. This is more meant to say like, oh, that's interesting. This is what celebrities are using and I can also offer some insight as a dermatologist as to some little things that I might tweak, little products I might add or swap out. So let's watch it together. What's up Harper's Bazaar? It's Offset. You ready to go to bed with me? First off, before I go to bed, I have oily skin, so I wanna make sure I get all the oil out. So what I do is I get my Stryas pad, alcohol free, cause I got sensitive skin. So I break out with like harsh alcohol. You take one pad out, look yourself in the eyes. Get on top of the nose first. My mom put me on these too. She put me on these in high school. You know, you're going through a little puberty, get a little bumps here on your forehead and stuff like that. Okay, so off the bat, Offset tells us that he has oily, possibly acne prone skin. He doesn't mention the acne, but he said back in high school, when his mom recommended him these Stridex pads, he was struggling with some bumpiness on his skin. So from the beginning, I don't know whether he's already cleansed his face or not, but the first thing I would say as a dermatologist is, especially if you have oily skin, I would definitely use a cleanser to remove all of that oil, dirt, grime, sweat off of your face after a long day of work. You know, him being in the recording studio, rapping, performing, doing everything he needs to do, running after two kids, he would benefit from a good cleanse. So I'll go over two cleansers that I really like for oily, acne prone skin. The first is the CeraVe Foaming Facial Cleanser. This comes out as a gel, but then as you're using it on your face and as you're lathering it on, it becomes more of a bubbly, foamy cleanser. And it does a really good job of getting rid of the oils without leaving your face feeling really dry, you know, prone to wrinkly and like stretched really tightly. It also contains a blend of niacinamide, which is an antioxidant. It's good for acne prone skin. Hyaluronic acid to help hydrate a little bit, as well as it's characteristic ceramide blend. And we think of ceramides as the glue that kind of holds your skin cells, which are the bricks together. And it is an important step in helping you maintain the health of your skin barrier. Another soap that I like to recommend for my oily skin patients or acne prone patients is Panoxyl Wash. So this is a benzyl peroxide wash. It comes in percentages from 4% all the way up to max strength at 10%. And you can choose which one you wanna use depending on how sensitive your skin is how oily your skin is, and how severe your acne is. So if you have very sensitive skin, stick with the 4%. If you have very oily skin, very severe acne, and not sensitive skin at all, you could work your way up to the 10%. Benzyl peroxide is anti-inflammatory, antimicrobial, and it's a really great staple product that I like to have my patients use both on their face as well as all over their body. So it can help treat chest knee and back knee, really convenient to use in the shower. And one thing I also always say, well, a couple things, but first, benzoyl peroxide can be very drying, so you don't wanna use it every day. You kinda wanna see how your skin reacts and then listen to it. You can titrate up usage if your skin gets used to it. And then secondly, benzoyl peroxide can bleach your towels. So a lot of my patients will tell me, you know, Dr. Park, like, after starting benzoyl peroxide, I'm getting all these orange stains on my towels or white spots on my towels. And I'm like, yep, that's the benzoyl peroxide. So just to keep an eye out for that and don't get alarmed if you see it. The first step that Offset talks about here are the Stridex medicated pads. These are alcohol free, as he mentioned, and their main active ingredient is salicylic acid. I have actually never heard of Stridex pads before. This was not on my radar at all. So this was a good opportunity for me to look it up a little bit and learn about a product that was totally new to me. So it starts at concentrations of salicylic acid at 0.5%, working its way up to maximum strength at 2%. And the manufacturer does say that if you have sensitive skin, start with the lower percentages and kind of work your way up. 
kind of similar to what I just said about the benzyl peroxide. So we know that salicylic acid is what's called a beta hydroxy acid. It is lipid soluble and it's able to go into your pores and really clean them out and get rid of all the gunk in there, all the grease, all the oil. And that's why it's really great for oily acne prone skin. I like that it comes in a pad form, a pre-soaked pad, because it's just very convenient. And we know that a lot of guys maybe don't have the most time in the world for their nighttime skincare routines. So it's really easy to just go and kind of smooth a pad all over. Another possible place you could use the salicylic acid pads is on your arms, on your legs, on your buttocks, wherever you get keratosis pilaris, that bumpy kind of strawberry skin looking rash. And I made a video on this below that I'll link to in the learn more area as well. And you can also use it if you have thickened heel skin. This is another place that you could apply these salicylic acid pads. I like that he has this as a part of his routine. I would just use a cleanser first and then use the pads afterwards. Let's keep watching. My Aquaphor, I don't wear, I don't wear lotion. So I only do Aquaphor. The oil. Now it's for the face, so I already got oily skin, so I do a light little bit just to cover the bases. I'm not trying to soak my face out. Hit the forehead. Already, your skin is brightening up. All right, so Offset is into slugging. Who knew? <laughs> slugging is the practice of putting an occlusive like Aquaphor or Vaseline, some type of petrolatum-based ointment over your skincare. Now, in this case, he didn't exactly do a whole skincare routine before the slugging. He basically just used the salicylic acid pads and he's using the Aquaphor as his moisturizer. I like that he's using just a little amount. He already has oily skin, so he doesn't need a lot. and. I would say it is even more important than ever for him to wash his face before slugging because you can think of Aquaphor as this really thick kind of protective barrier. And so if he hasn't done a thorough cleanse beforehand, then all that dirt, sweat, debris, oil from you know, the day that's sitting on his face will actually get trapped under the Aquaphor. So I would definitely say cleanse, then do his salicylic acid pads, and then maybe use like a very light moisturizer or oil, and then I would do the Aquaphor as the final step. But I'm a huge fan of Aquaphor. I like using it on my lips, on my elbows, on my cracked heels for any cuts and scrapes. It's just a really great multi-purpose protectant balm. And it has mainly petrolatum, but some formulations of it also have glycerin and basabolol and panthenol, which all help to kind of soothe the skin and really protect that skin barrier. So. Overall, I'm a fan of Aquaphor, but I think his order of usage of these products can be tweaked a little bit. Now after the shower, like I said, I don't do lotion. This is the oil I use. Palmer's cocoa butter. You gotta make it a routine. You can't do it once or twice. You gotta just keep doing it. All right, so Offset's next step in his skincare routine is using the Palmer's Body Cocoa Butter Oil. So this is an oil that contains a blend of sesame oil, soybean oil, and sunflower oil, and it helps to deliver moisture. It's basically like a moisturizer for people with really dry skin. And I know he mentioned that he doesn't like lotion. I mean, there are some lotions out there that are oil-free or non-comedogenic. So it's not that all people with oily skin can't use lotion, but oils can definitely be an alternative for people who don't like that more thick, creamy feel of lotion. I don't have much to add about this product since I haven't tried it personally. I would just say I typically would use the oil before the Aquaphor. So you're putting a light layer of the oil on to hydrate and moisturize and then locking all of that in with the Aquaphor on top. So I would just change the order of these two products. Let's keep watching. I put the oil in, put the durag in, let it sit. And then boom, I, probably, I try not to tie my hair in rubber bands and stuff like that too. I always get these scrunchies because this is going to keep your hair safe. It ain't going to break your hair off. All right, so Offset was talking about how he uses oil. He doesn't mention exactly which oil, but I think it's the same oil that we talked about before. And he kind of oils his scalp because he has more of a dry scalp and he has braids in. And then he puts a do-rag on and he always uses soft scrunchies, not rubber bands, things that don't damage the hair. So all of these are great tips. I recommend wearing your hair in loose styles all the time to prevent something called traction alopecia. Traction alopecia is a type of hair loss that can develop when you have really, really tight braids. And if you wear your hair in that hairstyle, commonly. That can actually really pull at and damage the root of the hair follicles and can cause irreparable damage and also hair loss. So I like what he's doing here that he's using soft scrunchies, that he's wearing his hair in a very loose kind of pony down like this. I would say when you're going to bed at night, you don't have to tie your hair up. Just give your hair a break from all that tension and pressure, but he is taking care of his hair right. So I just wanted to call that out. Last thing before you go to bed, 
Just got this shower, fresh. We gotta get that done, fellas, fellas. I know y'all get the, the wiping kind, but look how, look how, look how beautiful this thing. You throw it on that phone, you get that little fit. I'ma always do the women ones because it's calmer, it ain't too strong. I don't like my deodorant like busting through the. All right, so Offset is a big fan of Dove spray deodorant, specifically the women's version, because he thinks that the scent is less overpowering than the men's. So the one that he's using is the Dove Dry Care Deodorant Antiperspirant. It has the dark blue cap. The main active ingredient in this one is 20.2% aluminum chlorohydrate. First of all, Offset is doing it completely right in that he's applying the antiperspirant at night. That's actually key to how the antiperspirant works. So antiperspirants work because the aluminum forms little plugs in your sweat ducts in your armpits where you spray it and that blocks the sweat glands basically so that you cannot form more sweat and therefore you won't be as malodorous. <laughs> I was gonna say stinky, so you won't be as stinky. And the best time to apply this actually is on clean, dry skin at night because that makes it easier for the aluminum plugs to form in your sweat ducts. If you imagine if you are already sweaty and you've been running around and the area is already kind of slick with sweat and then you're trying to apply the antiperspirant, the aluminum plugs are gonna have a difficult time forming because there's already all this sweat coming out. It's best to put it on when it's clean area, when it's dry, and when there's no sweat coming out. So he's doing it exactly at right. You want to put on your antiperspirant at night on clean, dry skin. I also want to take this opportunity to briefly address a common myth that is floating around on social media and what I think is misinformation. Aluminum has long been demonized as an ingredient in antiperspirants because people think that it's linked to causing breast cancer. And that's simply not true. And if we look back at where this original claim came from, it actually originated from a chain letter that was being circulated and forwarded without much thought in the 90s. This chain letter alleges two reasons why aluminum is tied to and causes breast cancer. The first is that it says that because the aluminum is blocking the sweat ducts, you're unable to sweat and get rid of toxins. No, no, no. That is not the purpose of sweating. So we sweat because we're actually modulating our temperature. It's a way of regulating our body temperature, a way to cool ourselves off, not to get rid of toxins. We have kidneys, we have livers. Those are the organs that help us filter out toxins and get rid of toxins, not your sweat. The second thing that this chain letter alleged is that because you are scraping your skin with razors you're causing little nicks in your skin and that micro trauma and those tears allow for more aluminum to be absorbed into your bloodstream however studies that look at how much aluminum is absorbed into your bloodstream from topical application found that less than 0.012 percent of the aluminum applied is actually absorbed that represents only about 2.5% of the aluminum that you absorb from food, from your diet, in your gut, in the same amount of time. So really, the argument does not make sense. And to date, there has been no convincing evidence, no good data that supports the fact that aluminum causes breast cancer. In fact, some studies looked at the concentration of aluminum in different areas of the breast tissue, whether it's normal breast tissue or whether it's tissue with breast cancer. And the study found that there was no significant difference in aluminum concentration between cancerous breast tissue and normal breast tissue. Now, if aluminum were the causal ingredient for breast cancer, you would expect there to be higher aluminum in the cancerous breast tissue, but that simply was not the case. So you might be thinking, Dr. Park, what about natural deodorants? Well, I may be biased, but I do see a number of patients who come in with allergic reactions to the ingredients in natural deodorants. Because natural deodorants don't contain aluminum, they work mainly by using heavy masking fragrances to hide your body's stinky sweat smell. They use ingredients like essential oils, bergamot, sandalwood, and while that can be fine and dandy for people who don't have sensitive skin and who don't have an allergic reaction to fragrances, a lot of people can develop irritation and sensitivity and allergic rashes from these fragrances. And I've seen a whole host of reactions to essential oils in natural deodorants that really have caused an issue. So I'm not saying that you can't use natural deodorants, I just say 
proceed with caution, especially if you are sensitive to fragrances or if you have sensitive skin in the first place. The underarm area is a more sensitive area. It's a place that you're sweating. It's also a place that's usually covered. There's a lot of friction over it just from clothing or you rubbing your arm against that area. And so it is more prone to irritation to begin with. And so when you throw on top of that more irritating, potentially irritating substances, that could be a recipe for disaster. Okay, let's finish up the rest of his routine. Fellas, it's okay to go sit in the shop, get your nails done. That's a clean thing to do. Get your feet down too, fellas. You can't hide the creatures up one of them socks forever. You gotta, if you go get your nails done, I promise you it'll look better than it did before. So that's my routine. So he also talks about getting his nails done, both manicures and pedicures. And while I think, you know, you don't have to necessarily go to the salon, I certainly don't because I have a really weird phobia to nail filing. So I avoid all nail salons, but men or women should feel comfortable being able to go to the nail salon to get their nails trimmed, get all the gunk removed from it, get it really cleaned, you know, have it look nice. Just make sure you're going to a reputable place where they sterilize their tools really well. And on that note too, don't let anybody touch your cuticles. I know at nail salons, they love to rip off the cuticle here. You know, pushing it back is fine, but definitely no cutting, ripping, tearing, even, you know, trimming it really hard because that skin flap exists there for a reason. It exists there to act as a protective barrier to prevent microbes from sliding underneath the proximal nail fold and causing infections and inflammation. So don't let anyone touch your cuticles. Last but not least, one small addition I would make to Offset's nighttime skincare routine, aside from the cleansers, is to add a retinol or a retinoid. Since he has oily skin, I don't know if he gets acne or not, a retinol or a retinoid is a great vitamin A cream that can help cut down on some of that oil and help to exfoliate. And he can alternate this with his Stridex acne pads. So that was Offset's nighttime skincare routine. Threw in a little bit of hair care, a little bit of body care too, which I love. Gave me a chance to talk about a lot of great topics. I love reacting reacting to skincare routines. If you have any other ones you want me to react to, please link to them below. As usual, don't forget to hit like and hit that subscribe button because we have a lot more content coming out for you soon and I can't wait to share all of it with you guys. Thanks for watching. Until next time.